Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush, checking in with 3223A Kachiga coming in from Michigan. This team, three event finals so far. I know they really want to take this one as a win coming through, but they are uh, 34th in skills as of recording and bring a really phenomenal machine. I'll be doing that full overview of their robot. A couple things I really like overall is just how they're packaging their bot, uh, watching on the field, very efficient with their scoring. So, of course, we're talking about their cat area. Some cool things with pneumatics as well, too, that we'll be covering. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Trevor, let's start out on your uh, drag train. Talk to me about the configuration of it. I know we're going to be covering uh, flaps as well too. All right. So our drivetrain, we have a interesting drivetrain. It's five motor drive here, so there's six motors on it, but it's running at 55 watts uh, and 333 RPM to give us a good balance of power and a good balance of speed. So we can push a lot of people around, but it's still pretty fast. And then, so over on our flaps here. So our flaps here, uh, we just have normal straight flaps. Uh, they're plenty powerful to push in the normal tribals normally, but we can turn them down, so we have a regulator down here. So down underneath the catapult here, we have a pressure regulator to, oh. so we have a regulator down there to change the amount of pressure that we send to the flaps. And then, so during skills, we turn that all the way up to get as much purging power, because we don't use them as much in skills. And then in the game, we turn that down so we can get uh, more consistent flap power and we can consistently push balls underneath the entire time. And, and just to clarify, that's something you have to do pre-match, right? Yes, when you go in, But I love having that versatility for that uh, as well, too. And obviously, from a skills-wise, your team is one of the best in the world, so it's definitely worked out for you uh, so far. That's great to hear. Uh, let's keep passing on. Liam's going to be covering uh, next. Let's talk about uh, the uh, intake that you're using, Liam, and then uh, go to this big blocker that you have as well, too. I'd love to hear more about it. For sure. So we've spent a lot of time um, on our intake, uh, and it actually has two modes. So the first one is where it just holds it in the intake here. <laughs> it also puts it into the intake there, but um, so it, it puts it into the just the intake right there and keeps it there. And it does that through the use of a distance sensor right here, and then another one on the intake right underneath this uh, this antenna right here. So there it can keep it just in the perfect place to slam it under the goal. Uh, we can also put it into the cata, um, and then we can shoot from there. Good. So that allows us to, to push in really quickly and also de-score from our opponent's side and push it onto ours. Something i got to ask you is when uh, we interview other teams, some teams will put in intentionally some sort of blocker bar or something like that so it doesn't go into their cata. Uh, when you were looking at the game, I was thinking, why did you want to keep it so you could have that option to go into your cata? Well, I, I guess we just wanted both. So we knew we could do both if we have a kind of like a vertical intake like we have here. Um, so that way we can de-score easily from our opponent's side and then also put it in pretty quickly uh, into the goal. So our next thing we spend a lot of time in, more recently actually, is the blocker. Um, and so a lot of teams you'll see has a more vertical blocker that goes up. Um, we have both. So in our, its normal state, it's kind of more of a canopy. So it's really hard for an opponent to load yeah. into theirs. And it also it blocks it up kind of like that. But it's also attached to our hang. And so we can go really high if we want to. Um, we just try and keep it up after that so we can still hang at the end of the match. I think you're the first team that we've interviewed that has that option of that low blocker that mm -hmm. goes out really far. And like I said, whenever I talk teams, to me, having options and versatility is what leads to success for things. Yeah. So I love that, you, that your team has been able to incorporate that. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned uh, hangers as well, too, so let's pass over the cast. Talk yeah. more about uh, what you're doing for your hang as well, too. And then uh, we're going to start to go into your cata. Kind of cata is a two-part thing. So we'll talk about uh, the mechanical side of that as well. All right, cool. So we've got four pistons on hang. Uh, right now it's A tier, we're working on B tier. Um, something 
uh, recently that we changed was kind of the trigonometry with this the pistons in relation to the C channel. So uh, before we had something not ideal. The pistons were at not a great angle, so too much of the force was going into like horizontal, and we want the hang to go up. So we want this piston to be perpendicular to this C channel, because yeah. So when it's like when that's perpendicular, cosine 90 is zero get rid of the horizontal component, all that force is going into pushing it up, so we're a lot more air efficient now. Um, catapult, uh, if you wanna. So for skills, we put the tri ball right here. It's a puncher, it gives us a nice spread right in front of the goal. It's pretty low, so it, it they kinda just scatter around. It's very consistent. For game, we have two um, two options for how we position the tri-ball for game. We can do it right here. This is this gives us a pretty high arc, and then and it's a little more like erratic, the a little more inconsistent, which we think is pretty nice for game because you know someone can just sit there and block you. You get you go everywhere, so that's an, a nice spread for game, not skills obviously. And we can also load directly into the catapult. Um, but recently we've been doing this weird on top puncher thing more in game. Um, it's 33 RPM, we've got 12 to 36, um, yeah. From, from your catapult from a strategy wise, uh, you're obviously, you have a, a low area that you're shooting from, right? Uh, but I like that you were able to bring it in a bit more because I think that helps prevent large teams from blocking. Have you seen that been successful uh, during the matches? Oh yeah, like just, it, it's been, not, we haven't shot yet, we just, our first match we were pushing in, but Last tournament we were at Holiday Granville. It was it was great. It was good. We talked about the mechanical side of uh, your uh, cata, but I noticed uh, you're doing a lot with pneumatics, uh, not just in your cata, but through your entire robot as well too. So Brock, grab us up on this robot, talking about uh, your pneumatic systems and how they're working out for you. Yeah, of course. So underneath our um, eyeballs here, before it was our mustache, but we kind of just took that off right before this tournament. We were able to fit in all of our uh, pneumatic solenoids with the pressure gauge underneath here. Uh, so that we can uh, have air to hang, we only sh go up with one sil piston, even though we have two right here. Uh, we, we achieved that by just simply having two double action solenoids just with one um, not connected at all. And uh, this gives us a lot more versatility with uh, being able to use our hanging mechanism going up and down all the time with the blocker. Um, also recently we were, uh, had the problem of using the older style pneumatic tanks that we had that fit really well inside of here. We recently just switched to these larger tanks that we could not get to our valve stems at all. Like uh, under here and under here is super tight. So we had to find a remote way to uh, fill up our air. So we have uh, our pneumatic tubing running all through here and up to these two valve stems so we can easily fill up our air very quickly. I think we got to take a moment to truly appreciate how gorgeous your plumbing is. Can we flip that up again and take oh, a look yeah, at that? That's something I think is so underappreciated uh, in the community as well, too. And that is an absolutely phenomenal job. So kudos to you uh, oh, yeah. for that as well. Oh, yeah. uh, overall, what a fantastic machine, by the way. Kachiga, thank you so much uh, for taking time. Tell us about your team and your robot. Uh, as we look here at Sugar Rush, I know you're looking for big things, but I can't wait to see how you do here and, of course, throughout the rest of the season as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.